All right, so let's create our first monster in this game, and we're gonna avoid interacting with them for this step. Don't worry, we're gonna get to that real quick. But we haven't defined what death means yet, and we haven't really explained that. So, uh, what what is death? We just got really phil philosophical on this uh, tutorial video. But seriously, I'm gonna make a monster, I'm just gonna throw him in, and we're just gonna make sure that he works and he moves and, and all that stuff. So, um, we, we looked at how to make a game object. Now we're going to look at uh, how to make a monster. And a monster can be in various banks. So we're going to open up Monster Graphics Banks. And we're going to open Graphic Bank 0. And we already pulled in a monster. That's what was loading to the picture processing unit a couple steps ago. Um, here's the monster that we have. This little crazy looking bug monster thing. And we need to make... Uh, uh, a little tiny two frame animation dude moving in all four directions and we don't want to use the player palette we want to use a new palette so we're going to select a new palette not this one not this one but a new one and i'm going to call it bug bug monster palette and rename it and i'm going to change the colors i kind of like this guy's body being like a fire ant, I think was what uh, what the artist was originally going for. And instead of black, I could make it black. Um, I ch I tend to use uh, dark blue for my outlines, and I'm gonna make his eyes bright. If you remember in the art, they were white, or you know, I mean, white looks pretty good. So does like a yellow tint. Um, just kind of depends on how contrast do you want him to be. Um, sure, I'll go with white. Now I'm going to make him too wide too tall i'm going to manage his animations just like i did with the player i'm going to make one called i'm not going to he's not going to have an idle state he's just going to walk around so i'm going to call it walk down rename i'm going to add walk up rename i'm going to add walk left rename i'm going to add walk right rename cool so uh I'm now going to just go through and and make his animations. So each of these directions is going to have a two frame animation um, using the exact same method that we used to create the player's animation. I'm just going to go frame by frame. In fact, I'm just going to copy this guy, paste and flip for the second frame. Uh, now walk up is going to be pretty much the same. Now walk up, I have to figure out which one of these is, is his... There we go. It's that guy. Um, his feet. Now I'm going to copy that frame. Give him a tile frame kind of two. Go to frame two. Paste and flip. I'm going to go to his walk left. Frame one is this. Give him a two frame count. Go to frame two. And this one's a little bit hard to see. This is his bottom. This is the top. Or the this is the left and the right, and then that we use the same top half like that for this guy. Um, so ends up looking like that. And I'm just gonna copy frame one, walk right, give him a two count, uh, frame one, paste and flip. And I'm just gonna paste and flip and just put his feet in here forward backward okay so now i've got a a sort of four frame creature uh i'm gonna save him before i go much further i'm gonna call it bug monster and hit save okay now what i do just to make sure that that save took is i'll click off of him and i'll come back to him and now if i'm back onto him notice save disappeared right that means that every change that i make is automatically updating to him and that's that's what i want to have happen that's why that's why i saved him and i clicked off i won't forget to save him at the end now everything i do is the what the reason that saves up there is you could actually be building a monster and save multiple versions of that monster uh while while you still have that open i'm just gonna get it so i'm just affecting this monster i'm gonna go to object details um I'm going to rename his animation to walk, even though he's only got one, just to get in the habit of doing that. Um, and now I'm going to do his directions the same way. All the downs, I'm going to put down. Right, I'm going to put right. Ups, I'm going to put up, up, up. Left, I'm going to put left. And down, I'm going to put down. Feel free to not do that. Feel free to, feel free to make uh, diagonals and test that out if you want to try and make diagonals if you're a good sprite artist. Um, and you can assign them to, you know, you make a different animation for each direction. And you assign them to, the, to what you want them to assign them to. 
There's a couple other things in a monster that we have to assign than the player. Um, one of those is the reaction when he gets to the edge or a solid object. So when he gets to a solid object, we want him to reverse direction. When he gets to the edge, we want him to reverse direction. We didn't have to do that with the player, but we do have to do that with AI. Um, also, now I'm going to make a move kind of slow. I'm going to give him a fast acceleration speed so he just starts moving. Jump speed not observed in this because there is no jumping in this game. It is This is just a top-down game. Um, actions. He's going to have one action step. This is fun because now we can actually start playing with some of this stuff. Uh, at, we're going to give him an animation speed. I don't know. Try it out. See if you like it. We can make it faster or slower. His action step is he's going to show walk, and what he's going to do is he's going to move randomly in one of eight directions. He's going to start moving. Now, I can do a bunch of things here. I could, when he gets, I'm going to set an act. This is an action timer right here. Zero means it's going to set a random value between, I think, it's, you know, 32 and 256 or something like that. Um, if I put in a lower a number that's a multiple it'll it'll multiply that by a certain amount and so the higher this number is 15 being the max um the the um the faster or the slow the longer that timer will take the lower the number now i found a glitch sometimes when you use one it glitches out so i found use at least two for a lot of these i'm gonna use zero though because i want that randomness and we're gonna work on uh, being able to trigger uh that he uses random action timer and then longer or, sh or shorter action time. right now just keep it at zero and that'll sort of randomize when he changes direction so now there's two things that i can set when his action timer runs out or when he's done with his animations i can make things happen if i put when his action timer runs out when this timer gets down to zero what do i want to have happen do I want him to advance the next step? Do I want him to repeat his current step? Do I want him to go, like, say I'm here, I want him to go to the first step or go to the last step? Say I wanted to put, um, I don't know, spawn somewhere, and then, you know, he jumps to a last step to be destroyed. I could do that. I can make his last, you know, the only time you get to the last step is if he gets destroyed. Um, at the end of his action step, I can make it destroy himself, or I can make it restart the game, or I can make it win the game. These are going to be used very sparingly, probably, uh, once per game, probably. But uh, loop will mean nothing happens. He's just going to continue on with what he's doing. I'm going to make it repeat the action. So every time the timer goes off, he's going to change direction. He's going to start moving in a pattern of eight directions. And I'm going to give him a bounding box. Don't worry about the color here. Um, do it like that. Um, don't worry about the color being off. He's just using the wrong sub palette right now. Uh, and that's just here. That's not actually in the game. So I'm going to hit close. I think I got everything for him. Now, in order to put him in the game, I've got to make a group for him. So in a group, I've got four slots available to me. I'm going to fill them all with him. Now, it doesn't mean that first, second, third monster with the beta, it will mean that. But you can also randomize these uh, in in future versions, and in, in Mystic Origins, and that version that we version that we use to make that, uh, you could absolutely randomize this stuff. Um, we just we're, we're rebuilding that to make it. We're going to have to rebuild all the screen loading data, so we've pulled that and made this sort of simple. Um, so we're going to make a group called Bugs. And now we're going to now if you go to Monster Groups, you can see Bugs right there. Uh, if I go to Overworld and go to the screen you want the bug to be on. I'm going to go to screen info. This is where I set uh, the path. Don't worry about any of this stuff. None of it's relevant. Zero of this is relevant. Zero of this is relevant. Zero of this is relevant right now. But day monsters tab is relevant. And so are these sub palettes right here. <clears throat> this is saying what tile set do I want to use? Which bank? Uh, so far, everything we've made is in monster bank zero. And what you all, if I if I had tile sets one loaded, I'd only have the groups that use monsters from tile set one. I don't have any monsters there. I only have monsters in tile set zero. So I'm gonna make bugs. And this is complicated to understand, but when I was making this monster, the monster doesn't determine what colors he's actually using. Those are just references. The screen determines what colors he's using. Why is that? Well, let's say you had four different monsters and you created them with four different palettes. We looked earlier, the screen can only load two monster palettes. Which two, which two are the four does he load? How do I determine that? So instead of having the monsters determine it, the screen determines it. What the monsters determine is, is he going to use sub palette 
this first sub palette or the second sub palette. We said that he, this monster in particular is going to use this sub palette. So I'm going to change this sub palette to bug monster palette. And now he's going to appear like this. If I, if I put it on say the player palette, he would appear like the player. He would actually be this color in the game. Um, so I want to put it on bug monster palette and hit okay. And now my choices are loaded up here. I'm going to right click somewhere and place monster one place monster one by default the other ones are turned off i can actually look at that if i go to edit monster placement details and it shows me that these guys are disabled and this guy is enabled now don't use random and don't use ed right now yes they'll work no they don't right now we're, we're using all placement and no none of the randomness as far as monsters are concerned for the beta so if i wanted to place a second monster i could place that monster right here and if i didn't want them there i could go to edit monster play, uh, placement details and just disable monster 2 that's that easy okay let me just test this guy and make sure that he moves around okay and bounces off walls and solid objects and all that stuff i'm going to hit test export and test and there's my monster moving around bouncing off walls just like i told him to awesome so this is great this is a huge step now we have something to interact with this is honestly starting to feel like a game and as you can see it was pretty quick to get here